What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to play online on your 5.05 PS4 without PSN, similar to the COD Online method that I showed you before which basically broadcasts your LAN connection over the internet so you can play with other people online uh, using the LAN option. So it's basically similar to Tungle for the PC. Um, or, you know, Link or X-Link Kai, that kind of thing. But this method has two big advantages over the COD Online method. One of them is that you can play any game that has a LAN option on PS4 online. The COD Online payloads in beta, it only works currently on Black Ops 3, whereas this method will work on any game, essentially, that has a LAN option or system link option, uh, which allows you to connect to other people on the same network. If it has that option, if the game has that option, then you can use it to play online uh, as well. So that's one big advantage of this method over the COD Online method. The other big advantage is that you can also play with people on different firmware versions as well. The COD Online payload is a payload that only runs on 5.05, .05, so only people on 5.05 .05 consoles can connect to each other. This method will work on any firmware as long as you are on the same game version as the people you want to connect to, um, then it doesn't matter what firmware you're on. So, you know, you could be on 5.05 .05, and then you could have a bunch of friends who are on 5.55 or 6.00 or something like that. You could host a game on your 5.05 .05 PS4. They could join it and enjoy a modded game, even though they're on a higher firmware version. As long as they're on the same game version, you should be able to connect to each other. So. Those are the two big advantages this has over the COD Online method. The only big disadvantage of this method is pretty much that it's kind of awkward to set up. It can take quite a while to get it initially set up. But once you do get it initially set up, it's easy to, you know, use it again. You just have to, you know, open the program, press a button, and you're pretty much all set to go. So, so going over to the computer, basically this is done with a program called XBS Link which is initially designed for the 360. I think it stands for Xbox System Link. So it's designed to basically broadcast an Xbox 360's LAN connection over the internet so you can connect to other people online. Uh, but it also works with other game consoles like PS3 and conveniently PS4 as well. Um, so I'll put the links in the description. You're gonna need WinPCAP as well or WimpaCap. Um, it's basically required for XBS Link because if you don't have it installed and you try and run XBS Link, you'll see that you get an error. It just closes, it just crashes when it opens. So you need to install WinPacap. So I'll link that in the description. I'm just going to go ahead and run this as administrator and installed. And then once it's installed, I can run XBS Link right here. There we go. So, first of all, what you're going to want to do is make sure you're downloading the fixed version, which will be linked in the description. If you go to the official website of XBS Link, that version is actually outdated because this is a very old piece of software. The website hasn't been updated in a long time. So you want this version that I'll link in the description, which is 9.6.0. So make sure you get this version. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the settings and enter a nickname, which is basically your username on the application. So go ahead and do that. You can leave everything else in here as default. So then you're going to want to go ahead and select the network tab. And this is basically where we're going to set everything up for the network connection. So this is where all the kind of annoying setup part comes in. So first thing you're going to want to do is select your capture device, which is the adapter that's providing your computer with the internet. Now, this will not work on wireless. If you select your wireless uh, network adapter, you can see it says, please note that using a wireless connection as the capture device is very likely not going to work on Windows, sorry. So yeah, basically it's saying that if you have a wireless connection from your computer to your router, um, then it's not going to work. It doesn't matter if the PS4 is connected through wired or wireless to the router, but the PC needs to be wired to the router, otherwise it will not work. Now, before you click off the video, if you have got a wireless connection on your uh, computer that's running the tool, there is a workaround for this. Uh, good old connection sharing saves the day again. So I am also in the same position. My computer is 
connected to the router through wireless because my router is in another room. So in order to fix this, you can use connection sharing. So what you do is you get an ethernet cable, you plug one end of the ethernet cable into your PS4, you plug the other end of the ethernet cable into your computer, and then on your computer, you basically you go down to your little wireless connection here on your taskbar, you right click, you go to open network and internet settings, you go to change adapter options, and that will open up the network connections in the network and sharing center. And then you basically want to right click your wireless um, connection, your wireless adapter, and click on properties, select sharing, and then check this box to allow other network users to connect through this computer's internet connection. And if you don't have a drop down box, then just click OK, that's fine. If you do have a drop down box, then you're going to want to go ahead and select your Ethernet adapter, which is the adapter that the PS4 is plugged into uh, as the device that you want to share the connection with. And now you're sharing that connection, that wireless connection that's coming in from the router, you're sharing that down the Ethernet cable to your PS4. And then when you go to your PS4, you just want to make sure that the PS4 is connected. Uh, if you go to the network settings, you just want to make sure that you set up your internet connection using a LAN cable and not Wi-Fi on your PS4. You can just use the easy um, setup. And there we go. We are connected, as you can see. Got an IP address. We are connected through the computer's connection using a LAN cable. All right, so that's the workaround for getting um, wireless working with XBS Link on your computer. So. Basically, what you're going to want to do is select the Ethernet adapter now as the capture device. So your the the adapter that the PS4 is plugged into. Um, if you're using XPS Link normally, uh, if you have your PC connected to the router with a Ethernet cable, then you just again still select the uh, Ethernet adapter. Okay, so then you've got bind to IP. You'll probably if you're using internet connection sharing, you'll have a couple of IP addresses in here. So that, that one, the 137 one represents the PS4. This one here represents the computer. It's the computer's IP that you want to select. If you don't know what the IP is, you can just go ahead and uh, go on CMD and type in IP config and then find your wireless connection or the adapter on the computer that's connecting to the internet. And it'll give you the IP address right there. So you can see 1.64. That's definitely the right IP. So I'm going to select that one. So what you can do is you can click start engine now just to see if it will work. Now it probably won't. It'll probably give you this message saying that uh, the port is closed and the port is not reachable. So that means that you're most likely going to have to port forward. Now if you have UPnP enabled on your router, then you can go ahead and check this box to use UPnP NAT automatic port forwarding. Um, and also you might want to add an exception in your antivirus firewall if you have one um, to basically you know add an exception for XPS link or the port that XPS link uses which is 31415 or just for quickness I can just temporarily disable the firewall just to uh, see if it works so let's go ahead and start engine again I don't think this will work but you know UPnP never tends to work for me yeah so it's it's still closed so I'm going to have to port forward manually. So uncheck the um, the box for UPnP if it doesn't work. So in that case, we're going to have to port forward. So I'll put a timestamp on screen right now to skip port forwarding if you already know how to port forward. Um, the port that you need to forward is, of course, the one that's in this box, 31415. So go ahead and skip the video forward if you already know how to port forward. If you don't, I'm going to go ahead and show you now how to do it. So what you're going to want to do is again go onto CMD and type in IP config and get the default gateway of the adapter that's providing you with the internet connection. So in my case, it's uh, 192.168.1.254. And then I'm going to go on to the internet here and I'm going to paste the IP address or the default gateway address in here and press enter and that will load up my um, my router's home page. Now it, it'll pro it might prompt you to enter a username or password. It does for me when I go into the advanced settings. I have to log in. 
So um, if you don't know what the username and password is, try admin as the username and admin as the password, or admin as the username and password as the password. That's a common default um, username and password for routers. Either that or it will be on the sticker that's on the router itself. Um, or you can just search for it on Google, search your make and model of router and search default login and you'll probably find it online. Um, so once, you've, once you're logged into your router, you, I'm going to head to the firewall settings, which is where port forwarding is for me. So I've got port forwarding here and I will show you guys how to port forward or how to find out how to port forward on other routers because obviously each router page looks completely different to mine. So in my case, I have, you know, a list of all these games and applications that are preset. It's even got XB Connect in there and Xbox Live. Um, but obviously XBS Link is a more obscure, older software that's not going to appear in here. So I have to add it manually. So I'm going to go to manage games and applications, add a new gamer application, and I'm going to call it XBS uh, Link. And then Copy an existing gamer application, no. And then I have to enter the port number, which is 31415 for XBS link. So I'm just gonna enter that in every box. Protocol any, which is TCP and UDP. I'm pretty sure it's just UDP you need, but just to be safe, you might as well do both TCP and UDP. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that and then apply. And that's gonna add that as a new gamer application I can port forward. So now I can go back to port forwarding and also, uh, actually, let's see if this works first of all. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to XBS link, which is now added in here. And then I can select the device that I want to port forward it to, uh, which is going to be the computer that's running XBS link. So that's my desktop right here. Um, your router may not give you the host name that you can add, like the actual computer name. So you might have to click user defined IP and then enter the IP address of your uh, computer in here instead. So there we go, that adds it and then I can click apply and changes applied. So we've now port forwarded. Now I do have UPnP enabled. If you're port forwarding, it's a good idea to turn UPnP off because that can interfere with your manual port forwarding. So it's a good idea to turn UPnP off if you're manually port forwarding a port. So you can do that. Um, and if all else fails, if this, if the port still shows up as closed, you can, I, I never recommend this, but you could enable DMZ, which basically opens all your ports, which is very unsecure, um, opens you up to, you know, being hacked and stuff. So it's probably not a good idea to do it. But you know, if you're just wanting to do a quick test, then you can turn DMZ on. Uh, but really, that's like a worst case scenario. I would not recommend doing that. So anyway, did I apply that? Yes, I did. So we're good to go. So I've now port forwarded. Now, because your router page is going to look completely different to mine, your port forwarding is going to be different. So if you go to the website portforward.com and then you click on list of all routers and then you can go down and select your router, whichever one you have. So let's just select something random. Close the ad. Oh, only one model of this router. So then you select the model of router that you have. And then as you can see here, it gives you a guide on how to port forward. It also gives you the default username and password for the router. And then it shows you a step-by-step -step guide on how to port forward. So when it says something like, here's the ports for Xbox Live, you know, you would obviously just put in 31415 instead of this port. And yeah, that way you'll know how to port forward for your router if it's completely different to, the, to how mine works. That's just a handy guide that you can follow to port forward. So, all right, now we've got port forwarding out of the way. Uh, we should be able to go ahead and start engine now. So if I stop it and start it again, there we go. Port is open now, no error message. So we're back, so we, we have the engine running. So at this point, <laughs> Another good thing you can do for troubleshooting that I kind of recommend, you don't have to do this, okay? Let me let me make this very clear. You don't have to do this in order for XBS Link to work. It's just handy for troubleshooting. Um, basically, if you add your MAC address of your PS4 in here, then it's, it's a good troubleshooting step because you'll know that you've set everything up correctly 
because it will detect your your PS4 when you run the engine. It will detect your PS4's MAC address if you add your MAC address in and that way you know that you have set everything up correctly. So basically if I head on my PS4 and I head over to settings, network, uh, view connection status. So you can see I've got two MAC addresses in here. I've got a MAC address for LAN cable and I've got a MAC address for Wi-Fi. Uh, the one I want is LAN cable because that's how I'm connecting uh, my PS4 to the computer. If you're using Wi-Fi on your PS4, then you would put in the Wi-Fi MAC address or you can put in both because you can add multiple MAC addresses in here. So I'm going to add mine, which is BC60A70A. 4B67. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add that in here. And then I'm going to enable special Mac list and only forward these devices. So now when I start engine and I go to info, you can see it's not detected it yet. So all I have to do now is basically load up a game. So I'm going to do World War II. So I'm going to run the game, update later running Call of Duty World War 2 right now nothing showing up yet still hasn't detected my ah there you go there you go discovered local device and then it's got the MAC address in there so that's how you know that you've set everything up correctly you've got all your network settings set up correctly because it's detected the PS4 if you didn't add your MAC address in here it would never tell you um, so that's why adding your MAC address in here is a, it's a good troubleshooting step because it lets you know that you have set everything up correctly but you don't have to do that of course it should work regardless so let's go into multiplayer or so actually let's do zombies so I've got XCX solutions um, he's ready and waiting he's got his XBS link set up so that I can show you a demonstration of me connecting to him and I'm me being able to join his game and him being able to join my game. So in order to connect to another person, now that you have everything set up correctly, if we head into Nazi Zombies. So there's two ways of connecting to people, but I think the clouds doesn't work anymore. Like if I click load, it says there's no clouds available and I don't think I can set one up. Let me see, uh, join slash create. Yeah, okay, so that doesn't seem to work. So it looks like um, the cloud servers doesn't work anymore. This used to be really good because it would show a list of all the rooms. It was basically a list of all the rooms that people were, all the games that people had set up and then you could join them and if they were password protected you could enter the password or some of them won't be password protected and there would be lots of people in. Uh, but that doesn't seem to work anymore. However, there is another way that we can connect which is right here. So the remote host You'll probably have something to do with like dns.org in here. Just, just delete that. And what you need to do, so if I'm trying to connect to XCX Solutions right now, there's two ways I can do it. Either I can give him my IP address, which you can find by, you know, just going on the internet and typing in whatismyip.com. It'll give you your external IP address. So I can basically send my IP address to him. He can enter it in this box and click directly connect to remote host and then he's connected to me or vice versa. Uh, he sends me his IP address and then I click directly connect to remote host as you can see and I am connected to him. And then if you go to, to info, you can see that he's showing up in there. And there he is, XCX Solutions. There's even a little chat window as well. So I can go ahead and send him a message and he can reply. So there you go, he replied. So we are definitely connected to each other. So now that we've got this established, all we have to do is go on the game and search for a game. And as you can see, his game shows up. So he's hosting right now and I can see his game. And bear in mind, the reason the ping is so high, uh, it's like almost 400 milliseconds, is he is in Australia and I'm in the UK. So that is how, you know, that's how good this is. This is how good it works. You can connect to somebody on the other side of the planet with this um, over your LAN connection. So yeah, he's in Australia. I'm in the UK. That's why the ping is really high. But obviously, if you're connecting to somebody who's at least on the same continent as you, you're going to get a much lower ping and you're not going to get you know any lag. So 
I can set up a game and host a game myself and then he can join me as well because we're connected on XPS link. He'll see my game, he can join and we can start up a modded lobby. So so if you want more people to join, you just have to go ahead and you know give them the IP address and then they can directly connect to remote host and then you know more people will be in the same kind of room as you on XPS link and then you can all connect to each other. And yeah, it's so it's definitely a bit awkward to set up as you can see this video is taking up quite a bit of time. Um, but as you can see, we've got a game loaded up here on zombies, me and XEX solutions on the other side of the world playing online on our 5.05 .05 PS4s. So that's pretty awesome. And yeah, you can just have a load of people join uh, and set up games using this. Uh, and like I said, it works on, you know, different firmware versions. Uh, people with different firmware versions can play with each other. Um, people on uh, different games, obviously, unlike, you know, the COD Online payload that only works on Black Ops 3. As you can see, this is working on World War 2. It'll work on any other Call of Duty game because I think all the COD games have a LAN option um, and, you know, any other game that has a LAN option as well, this should work with. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, so, hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and uh, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.